I have the pleasure to invite Mr. Kailash Satyathi, a child, a child right activist and Nobel Peace Laureate to give his statement. Mr. Satyathi, you have the floor. Madam President, Director General Dr. Tedros, Honorable Ministers and Distinguished Delegates, my dear children of the world, let me begin with a Sanskrit prayer. Sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukh bhag bhavet. Om Shanti. May all be happy. May all be free from illness. May all see what is auspicious. May no one suffer. May Peace prevail. My dear sisters and brothers, today we remember those who we have lost to the pandemic. We also pay tribute to our health and frontline workers for their great sacrifice. I thank my dear brother, Dr. Tedros for inviting me to speak at this August Assembly. I commend his leadership and applaud his team for their relentless work in fighting the pandemic. I also extend my appreciation to respected health ministers for their work. Today I am here as the voice of the millions of voiceless children who are left behind. They are the children who live with intergenerational poverty and hunger. The same children are forced to work and sell their bodies. They are the same who face the worst health outcomes and denied education. They have little access or no access to clean water and sanitation. They have been exploited for decades and centuries. Therefore, this 74th World Health Assembly will be a defining time in our society and in the history. It gives us the opportunity to take a moment to evaluate the choices we have made and their human cost and to consider the choices we have today. What are the choices we have made? Eight trillion dollars have been released as COVID response fund in 2020. But only a disgraceful 0.13%, I repeat, 0.13% was allocated to the most marginalized communities through multilateral assistance. Wealthy countries chose to cut down their ODA budgets for low-income countries that face immeasurable misery. The pandemic is not only a health or economic crisis, dear friends, it is a crisis of justice, crisis of civilization, and a crisis of humanity. What have we lost as a result of these crises? While the world has suffered as one, we have not suffered equally. Two-thirds of the world's Largest companies made an additional $109 billion in 2020. At the same time, 140 million children and their families will be pushed into acute poverty. This is unacceptable. This is injustice. They are invisible children of the world who instead of being in their classrooms are living on the streets, trapped into workshops and brothels, orphaned and abused, living in institutions, conflict zones and refugee camps. They are children from the same communities that have faced generations of racial discrimination, injustices and violence. Friends, 
they are the children who are working in cocoa fields of Ghana and Ivory Coast and the children in Colombia's coffee fields. They face the health impact of the increasing use of pesticides, machine and electricity beside injured limbs and muscle damage. They are 10 year old Nageswar who lost his speech from the trauma and torture at the hands of his employer. I have heard the children scream in their sleep and the deafening silence in the day. My organization in India has rescued over 100,000 child laborers in the last four decades. Let me tell you that most of these rescued children were suffering various health problems, different ailments, diseases, burns, weak teeth and eyesight, malnutrition, developmental challenges, tuberculosis and so on. The health impact of child labor is felt throughout the life. Today, we have, unfortunately, 152 million children working at the cost of their childhood and freedom in the world. But due to this pandemic, the number is now set to increase in millions more for the first time in decades. Therefore, what choices lie ahead of us? Experts have warned that the next wave is likely to target children. This is what we know today. We cannot wait for the house to be on fire again for us to have the extinguishers ready. If we don't learn from our mistakes, we will not be losing our people because of the virus, but because of our lack of preparedness, apathy, and complicity. We have to build back better for our future. The COVAX initiative is a step in the right direction, but only compassionate politics and moral leadership can give it any meaning. Wealthy nations must support economically. Excluded communities by making COVAX inclusive, democratic, and well-resourced. If there is one thing we have been forced to learn today, is that till everyone is safe, none of us are safe. It is true of both people and nations. It is the hour of crisis that true character of leaders is demonstrated. Every child deserves their fair share of the world. We need urgent and accountable action to protect them. So, I call upon agencies of the United Nations must stand united now. This is the time to act with the true spirit of multi-sectoral partnership for children. In this regard, I recommend an interagency high-level group to recommend concrete and time-bound actions to safeguard our children who are directly or indirectly affected by COVID. Secondly, I demand the waiver of all intellectual property restrictions on COVID vaccines manufacturing democratization of technical knowledge and access to raw material. Perhaps you are aware that 170 former world leaders and Nobel laureates recently demanded the waiver of intellectual property restrictions on COVID vaccines. I thank President Biden for supporting this demand. Other countries must also do the same. Thirdly, 
protect our children now and from immense mutations of the virus. We have seen the devastating situations in India, United States, Brazil and Nepal. It is possible anywhere in the world. We hope to organize focused consultations with the experts to support the efforts of, the, of WHO and national governments to protect the most left behind children from this virus. Finally, I call on you, respected health ministers, to create budgeted action plans and constitute task forces to reach the poorest and most marginalized children in your countries. This will ensure vaccination, pediatric facilities, and social protection floors. High-income countries must support this. In addition, I ask you, please, don't amplify superstitions around COVID and vaccines and stick to best scientific knowledge. Dear sisters and brothers, we are at a crossroads and generations will pay the price of our choices we make today. Profit, politics and property can wait, but not our children. Their freedom, safety and childhood cannot wait. If we leave entire populations of children behind, any investment in healthcare will fall through the cracks between one generation and the next. Dear sisters and brothers, I call upon you. Let us globalize compassion for our children. Let us globalize compassion as we move forward from the wreckage of this pandemic. Let us take all our children with us. Thank you.